Okay, so let's say you bought one of these headlights for your R56 Mini Cooper S, so the ones with the LED DRL and the, the indicator to update the look with projector lamps, make it look like the F series cars. These ones came from a, a UK seller and they have the correct beam pattern for right hand drive cars and they also have the electric motors in that adjust the vertical aim which all the UK cars had but when I put them in I got a warning light and the vertical aim didn't work it turns out that that's because they're wired wrong uh, let's see if I can bring this closer in and zoom in a little You can see the plug here, so the two fat connectors on this side are for um, main beam and ground. Dip beam is this bottom connector on this side. I think that's the right way around either. Either that's dipped or main and, and this is the other one. And then there should be a gap of a pin and then four pins and then the last pin up here is the indicator. The indicator is in the right place. That, you can see the pin there. But the way these are wired in China, they've got the headlamp connector, no gap, and the four pins for the electrical, the motor that does the adjustment, and then a gap and an indicator. Like I said, that's wrong. It should be pin, gap, pin, 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 not all the pins in a gap and a pin. You could repin these fairly easily. All you need is a set of pin tools. You can pick these up off like eBay or Wish.com or pretty much anywhere. But uh, focus, you fuck. There we go. Um, this is the one that you need. They come on a little like keychain. They cost pence. The other thing you'll notice is that they covered the back of the connector. Yeah, focus in hot snot which is also really easy to get out all you need is a little isopropyl alcohol which I have in a little spray bottle right? and the connector let's see if I can do this and stay in shot just cover the back in IPA all right give it a second or three or five Let it do its magic. To make life easier, we're just going to take this uh, split tubing off, which is the same stuff I've used all over the kit car, so I have plenty to replace it with. Trying not to slice straight through the wires, obviously. Let's see. There's the connector. All you have to do is get in here with a little tool. This is a pick. Just lift the hot snot out. And you can see that the IPA just dissolves the bonds and it comes straight out more or less doesn't damage the wiring doesn't do anything bad let's just zoom back out it's a bit easier for me to stay in shot and I peel the rest of it out you can see it comes out really easy Obviously, try not to shove your pokey tool straight through the wires. Because then you've got something else to repair. I'm 
they did a slightly better job hot gluing all the connectors in on this one than the other connect cable that I done did so with some hot snot in an empty cable socket but obviously we need to get in there so Right, and then all you need to do is these four wires, blue, white, yellow, green, right, they need to move down one pinhole. So, take your pin tool, it's this narrow one, you shove it down the obvious hole. kind of hard until the pin pops out of the back. Bear with me a second. Okay. I apologize. I knew that was going to happen. The doorbell rang. So, with a very heavy battery for the Range Rover. All you do, like I say, you shove this down the hole that's above the pin. Quite hard. And then the pin pops out the back. Take the pin, move it down a hole, push it back in till it clicks. Once you get it angled right. Mm -hmm. Stabbing myself in the hand with the pin tools. Go on. Sometimes they need a little gentle persuasion like that. Then they'll go in. Depends how uh, straight they remained after you shoved them out. So just repeat that three more times for the white one. Down to next to the blue one. And the yellow one. Which moves down next to the white one. And the green one. Moves down next to the yellow one. Let's get the last two a shove. So they go down. Right. So the reason they hot snotted all this in in China, this looks like it's probably a panel mount connector or it's certainly not designed for use in the engine bay if it was an engine bay connector it would have rubber like uh, little rubber stoppers that go in the back like I'll show you this guy this is a proper external grade connector actually again this is made wrong this was put together in China it's a DRL controller these little booties which shove down the end should actually be crimped onto the end of the cable with the uh, connector crimp. I can kind of show you how it goes on. I have a set of these uh, amp super seal connectors over here which I would have used for the DRL connectors but I've run out of two pin ones so you can see they're the same little booty and this is the connector that you crimp on and the little booty should be sitting in there and it gets crimped on with the rest of the cable but on that DRL controller they're not and on the lights 
There's there's nothing. These are these are dry use connectors. Oh, I mean, it's no worse really than what we used to have on cars in the 60s and 70s, which were all open back connectors. Um, I might hot snot the back of these back up again. I think. But that's it. Once you've done that, this is the stepper motor up here. That should work just fine. You can check you've got the right pins on both the new one and the old one. See if I can get this in a place where you can see it. All right, I'm set to resistance scale. Auto ranging, but Four pins are two sets of windings, each adjacent pin, I apologize for the really noisy motorcycle we just went past, each adjacent pin should be a set of windings, it should be about 8 ohms, so, you know, I'm on like uh, blue and white there, yellow and green should be a pair of windings. Just confirm that you've got them in the right place, obviously if they're wrong, nothing's going to happen, the system just flags a fault, that's how these went in the first time. Uh, if you somehow had these upside down, the motors will adjust in the wrong direction, right? So just, just transpose the pairs. And that's it. That should get you your motorized aim working again. Uh, other than that, these lights... A little bit cheap, maybe. Um, remains to be seen how they stack up. I've seen some people say that they only lasted a year or so on Facebook when I asked for help. I don't think the lenses are particularly scratch resistant, so they're probably going to get scratched to, you know, nothing within a fairly short space of time, but hey, we'll see. And we'll see if there are actually any better light output than the standard halogens on the R56, which are awful, especially awful because one of them's going yellow. So I might do a video on refurbing those. Uh, but even with night breakers in, my fiance who drives the car isn't particularly happy driving at night, so I'll try some projector lamps and see if they're any better. I don't really want to retrofit the Xenon lights because to do that in the UK, uh, legally you need a washer system fitted. And these cars with halogen lights didn't have a washer system, so I'd have to retrofit all of that. Um, they should technically have self-leveling, but actually the manual adjustment would probably suffice for the MOT as long as it works. Um, for those outside of the UK, the MOT is our annual roadworthiness test. So yeah, I'll put these on the car and uh, we'll see how she fares. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.